Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'd like to show you how to create a Rich Faces 4 application that has some AJAX capability so we can do something like this. Do you see how when I'm typing into this text box it's immediately repeating it, echoing it on the same page without refreshing the whole page? What you're seeing down here is just the AJAX log component so you can actually see what's going on behind the scenes. So when we're finished, we can actually get rid of that. So I'm going to step you through how to create this application from scratch. What I'm first of all going to do is just close this existing application. And I'm going to say File New. And I'm just going to create a dynamic web project. Now if you don't see it in here, you can go to Other, and then you can go down to Web, and you'll find it in here. Okay, so we'll just call this Test App 1 using Apache Tomcat. I already have a server created. Dynamic Web Module version 3.0. And we'll use the Java Server Faces 2.0 project. Leave this page the same. Let's generate a web.xml deployment descriptor. And in here for the user libraries, make sure you choose this from the dropdown. Uh, you're going to choose JSF2 and uh, Rich Faces 4. Now you probably don't have your Rich Faces 4 library, so in just a moment I'm going to show you how to create this and then add it to your project. Okay, so for right now we'll just hit finish. Okay, looks good. So let me show you real quickly how to create a library that contains all of your necessary jars. I'll go to Window, Preferences, Java, Build Path, User Libraries. Okay, so let's say that I want to create a new library called Rich Faces 4. I'll give it a slightly different name. Maybe I'll call it Rich Faces 4 underscore new. Now you'll see that it's empty because it doesn't have an arrow next to it. I'm going to add some jars to it. Now I've already downloaded the Rich Faces bundle from JBoss's website and in there there's a folder called Artifacts and under there you find Framework and you choose the two files that don't have the word Sources in there. Okay, now I'm going to highlight this again. I'm going to add more jars. This time I want to go into the UI folder and I'll choose these jars right here. I need to add three more files, add jars. Now the three required files are the CSS parser, Google Guava, and SAC. And uh, there's also one, a validation API. Uh, this is optional. This is if you want to use annotations for validation on your beans. We'll go ahead and include those. Now this download actually does not already contain these jar files, so you will have to go out to the internet and find them. You can find the names of these jar files uh, by going to the JBoss's Rich Faces website, look at the documentation, and it will tell you uh, that you know, that you need to download these files. So it's pretty well documented. I'm going to select all four of these and then hit OK. And so if I wanted my application to use that library that I just created, I just right click on my project, hit Properties, Java Build Path, make sure I hit Libraries, maybe instead of using this one right here, I say Add Library, I select User Library, Next, and here it is. Then I hit OK. The next thing I'm going to do is look at my web.xml file. It looks like we have a little warning in here. If we go to the source, uh, this is just saying, look, we don't have these welcome files. We can just get rid of these. OK, looking good so far. Now what I want to do is right click on my web content, and I'm going to create a new XHTML page. If you don't find it in there, uh, make sure you have JBoss Tools uh, plugin downloaded. You can find it in here under JBoss Tools Web XHTML page. 
Okay, so I'll just stick with the default name and I'm going to create a blank Rich Faces page. Hit Next. It includes these tag libraries and then I hit Finish. Now I'm going to edit this page. So really what I'm interested in, I'm going to get rid of the Rich panel. Basically I have my body tags and I'm going to start placing stuff in here. So I'm going to take my JSF HTML and I have a text input. I'll place that in there. I'm going to give my text input a value. I want it to point to a managed bean attribute. Well I have to have my managed bean first. So here's my Java resources. Okay, I'll right click on my source, new, class. I put my package name and then my class name. And now I'm going to indicate using an annotation that this is actually a managed bean. Okay, let's call this test bean one. We're going to import managed bean. And in fact, if we just replace this with a star, then if I hit my at sign and then control space, it shows me my other options as well. Let's say I wanted this to be uh, request scoped. I can choose that right there. So in here, I'm going to have a private string. I'll have an attribute called name. And I can even give it a default value if I want. Now I'm going to right click, source, generate getters and setters. There they are. Okay, let's clean up the indentation. Source, format, and now we're good. So we're going to reference this as testbean1.name. So in here, space and then control space, value equals, pound curly brace, testbean1, dot name. I'm going to copy this value right here because we're going to be using this in the output text as well. So here's output text. Place it right down here. Value equals. Now I want to give my components ID so uh, you know, the, if, if I don't provide explicit IDs, uh, the environment will create them for me and they're rather cryptic. So I'm going to call this form uh, ID equals F1. And I will uh, say in here, ID equals name1. And in here I can say ID equals name2. Okay, so I want to have some AJAX behavior, so there's some auto submit going on. So let's go ahead and, as a child of this input text, I'm going to find my rich faces A4J, and I'm going to drag my AJAX as a child on here. Control space. I want my event to be key up. Okay, control space, render equals, and I point to the component that's going to re-render, which is name2. Now another thing we can do in here is we can place the logging component right here inside there. So this is for testing purposes. We get a visual indication of what's going on during runtime. So I'll save what I have so far. Okay, this looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and right click on new file. Let's run as and run it on the server. And here we have it. So let's type in some letters and you can see that as I'm typing, we can see the Ajax information. And this is all once again rendered because of the Ajax log component. Okay, so I'll type in What's cool about this is that you can clear this logging information. You can uh, set the level of your logging. So if you want to get really detailed, you'd say debug. And if you only want to see errors, then you just set it to error. So let's type in 
something else, you'll see that uh, I'm not getting all that detailed debugging information. Well, I hope you got a lot out of this video tutorial. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.